In the rite of baptism, parents are told, you are accepting the responsibility of training your children in the practice of the faith. It will be your duty to bring them up to God's commandments, as Christ taught us, by loving God and our neighbor. This is a very important responsibility. Indeed, the most important duty parents have is to prepare their children for eternity. There are, of course, many parents who understand this truth, but who judge themselves to be failures nonetheless. Many Catholics are very confused and upset because their grown children, in spite of receiving a Catholic education and a good example from their parents, have left the church and no longer practice the faith. Inadequate catechesis, youthful rebellion, the allurements of this world, the bad influence of peers and role models, selfishness and laziness all play their part. Parents are supposed to provide discipline, but this can often be resented and rejected as tyranny. Parents are supposed to offer advice and correction, but this is often viewed or experienced as nagging. In a society that undermines authority, enshrines relativism, and stresses doing your own thing, the mission of parents seem almost impossible. God asks them to persevere even so, trusting in Him while doing their best to cooperate with His grace. Not all saintly parents have had the satisfaction of seeing their misguided children return to the church. In the 14th century, St. Bridget of Sweden was happily married to a Swedish nobleman, and together they had eight children. A daughter, Catherine of Vestina, who was eventually canonized as saint, and a son, Charles, who broke his mother's heart by his notorious life of sin. Bridget was partially successful in helping to improve the moral standards of the Swedish royal court, but she failed in her efforts to influence her son. The news of Charles's death after a desolate life grieved Bridget very deeply and hastened her own death. St. Elizabeth Ann Seton had a similar experience. One of her two sons lived an immoral life in spite of her ceaseless prayers and sacrifices on his behalf. The 6th century queen, St. Clotilda, widow of the Frankish King Clovis, suffered greatly as a result of her son's quarreling over the royal throne. One of them was killed in battle, and another tried to secure the throne for himself by murdering his nephews. Something similar occurred several centuries later in the life of St. Matilda, the widow of King Henry I of Germany. She was the mother of St. Bruno, who had caused her very little trouble, and of Emperor Otto I and Prince Henry the Quarrelsome, both of whom caused her a lot of grief. Matilda, perhaps unwisely, favored Henry, which caused Otto to treat her poorly. Henry, instead of being grateful for her support, also treated her badly. The one thing the two brothers agreed on was that Matilda was much too generous to the poor and to the church. She ignored their complaints, treated them with patience, and eventually died with the affection and respect of the common people. Children can cause their parents grief by ignoring God's call, but sometimes these roles are reversed. In the 11th century, the future St. Anselm, discerning a religious vocation, wanted to enter a monastery at the age of 15. His father strictly forbade this. Anselm rebelled by going to the opposite extreme. He abandoned religion altogether and lived in a carefree, irresponsible manner. Thus, an unsupportive parent was partly to blame for a youth's rebelliousness. Fortunately, Anselm later repented and thereafter answered his calling. It's God's will that parents raise their children in righteousness and help prepare them for their spiritual pilgrimage. This means the parents must have a living faith. And as St. Francis Xavier observed, no man ever really finds out what he believes until he begins to instruct his children. Our children are precious to us, for they have been entrusted to us by God. We want the very best for them, and so it's only natural for us to be distressed if they ignore or reject their moral and religious upbringing. In such a case, the Lord wants us to remain loving and accepting toward them, but also unceasing in our prayers and unyielding in our faith. 
While praying for her son's conversion, St. Monica had a consoling dream in which an angel reassured her, Your son is with you. When she later told Augustine about the dream, he snidely remarked that they might easily be together if only Monica would reject her Christian faith. Monica immediately responded, He did not say that I was with you, he said you were with me. This response made a deep impression on Augustine. Similarly, we must not try to achieve a superficial family unity by giving in on moral issues or by denying our faith. For this sort of bad example makes it even less likely that our loved ones will come to accept the truth. Rather, we must remain with the Lord on His terms, hoping and praying that our children will one day join us. St. Louise de Merlec wrote to St. Vincent de Paul regarding her disappointment in her son. St. Vincent responded, The faults of children are not always imputed to their parents, especially when they have been instructed and given good example, as thank God you have done. Moreover, our Lord, in his wondrous providence, allows children to break the hearts of devout fathers and mothers. Thus, the decisions your children have made don't make you a failure as a parent in God's eyes. You're entitled to feel sorrow, but not necessarily guilt. Do not cease for praying for your children. God's grace can touch a hardened heart, as happened when St. Louis' son allowed himself to be influenced by the teaching and example of St. Vincent. Father in heaven, you know what it is to grieve over sinful, unappreciative children, and so I turn to you in my sorrow. My child seems to have left the faith. I wonder if I have failed. More important, I fear for those whom I love. Be ever with my family, dear God, to encourage, console, support, enlighten, and bless each member. Bring back those who have strayed. Touch those whose hearts have hardened, and forgive those who have offended you by selfishness, laziness, or indifference. You sent your Son Jesus to die for us. I pray that this wondrous sacrifice not be in vain. Give my child the grace of repentance. Help me to persevere and to suffer all things, and to offer all things for your glory. Dearest Mary, Mother of God, please pray for my family. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.